Hello, I'm here with Eleanor Choquet to talk about really your passion for this amazing project you're working on. Can you tell us more about it? I can, and you're right, it is a passion. Uh, I am academic dean and trainer in intercultural, for intercultural communication here at the Estes International Business School at the Lille Catholic University in France. And I believe very strongly that uh, if we're going to be sending students abroad every year, which we do, uh, we have to prepare them for it properly. I think that it's probably even an ethical question that if you're going to encourage, impose uh, on our first years, so from the age of 18, uh, a two to four month international experience in various parts of the world, they have to be prepared. And so that's what we do. And over the five years that they're here, we give them a total of 80 to 100 hours of intercultural training that makes them pretty competent by, they come out, by the time they come out. Amazing. And what are you trying to do when you're preparing them? Well, experience shows that uh, students, as uh, in the corporate environment too, if you send people away with no preparation, the chances of them coming back precipitously, having failed in their experience, in their mission, uh, fallen sick, uh, or come back completely in defence uh, in relation to the culture they've been to, uh, you multiply those chances quite significantly if you don't do any preparation. And so over the years, my experience has shown that we do prepare our students really thoroughly, and we have a virtually 0% um, accelerated return rate and our students come back much more open-minded although it's a bit difficult to estimate but certainly if we can judge that according to how many want to go away the second year then it's 100% success rate so they come back much more open-minded much more prepared to question cultural difference and much more able to recognize that their culture may not be central to uh, that of the rest of the world. Yes, I mean, getting back and continuing on an academic basis, is that what we're really trying to do? From the, the ethnocentric to the ethno-relative, the world view? That's certainly what I think is part of our mission in higher education. And we're at the Estes International Business School, we're preparing our students to work on the international field. And without intercultural competence and developing intercultural intelligence, I don't think they're going to be competent in that field in the future. Lovely. And what do they say when they come back? Oh. They say, mm, almost invariably, they say they had an amazing time uh, and they learned a huge amount. And they also almost all say that they're very grateful that they had the training before they went because it completely changed the way they saw and experienced their time there. Wonderful. So that preparation is critical. Absolutely. And another off the wall uh, question, the idea of... Skype and this always on interconnectivity back with base. Do you think that has an effect? Do you think they really do have a uh, an inbound isolated experience these well, days? Well, no, isolated they don't have. And if you look back twenty years uh, or thirty years, when I have first had my when I had my first intercultural experience and international experience, uh, it was really expensive to phone. We were not on Skype. We were not on the internet. On the other hand. We insist on them going separately. They're not allowed to go with a friend. So they have to at least travel and experience the time by themselves. That's one thing. And we do actively encourage them to uh, limit their contact on Skype and the internet to a maximum of an hour a day. Now, how much they do, of course, remains their choice. <laughs> but what's interesting is that we notice it's very visible in their journaling when they come back. Those that have played the game have had a real cultural experience and made the most progress linguistically. Those who haven't. Uh, come back much less fulfilled. So there's an honesty test that pays oh, there off. there is. Okay. Maybe I just believe in humans being fundamentally trustworthy. There we are. Yes, the, the, the beautiful honour of the student. That is amazing. And this programme will continue? <laughs> yeah, it's been going for the last 10 years and uh, we're all set for it to continue. So the students have to go abroad at least three times in the, in the course of their five years. Most of them do four international experiences and they come back with uh, having, some of them having been to four out of five continents, which at the age of 22 or 23 when they qualify is quite impressive. Very good. And by the way, linguistically, are they getting language training for the oh, target absolutely. destination country? So the first year they have to go to an English speaking country and they get something like uh, 80 hours of English language training before they go. And in the second year they have to go to um, a Spanish or a German speaking country in the same. They have three hours a week of that language, target language. Amazing. So you've been running this program for 10 years. Yeah. So one imagines you have those people who've done the first year and the first trip and they've oh, done the five great. years and they've graduated yeah. and they've gone into business. Mm -hmm. Is there any feedback? Are there any stories from that? Stories? Uh, mm, 
can't think of any stories except that uh, companies are very forthcoming in saying that our students are extremely competent both linguistically and culturally and that um, if they have uh, any uh, possibilities to send them abroad then students with that kind of background are going to be the first people that they're going to call on. So in these tough times with a bit of student debt and not a super abundance of graduate employment we're really giving them a helping hand giving them a huge helping hand and also opening doors for them to go and travel and work elsewhere in the world. So it means that not, they don't just have to look at France as their possible destination. The world is their oyster. As they say. As they say. Eleanor, thank you so much for Pleasure. spending some time with us. Pleasure, Matthew. Thanks. Cheers.